What's going on everybody? Halo Drama here. Back with oops, back with another Commander Deck uh, video of mine. Um, I usually use the get the wizard gathering set, but for some reason it's not working. I don't know what's going on. But so I'm gonna use EDH Rec because you can look up the cards on here either way. Um, but AC if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> Tyrant of Gyre Strait for Force and Simic, that's green and blue. You get a 5-5 Legendary Creature Serpent that says you may play an additional land on each of your turns, which that's awesome. And it also has pretty much a landfall uh, trigger whenever you, eh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. I can tell you now, from personal experience of using this deck, that gets a little out of control. Um, which is benefits for me. Um, but let's go ahead and get into it. Um, these uh, cards are not in any particular order outside of being categorized on uh, creatures, enchantments, sorceries, instants, and artifacts. There are no planeswalkers in this deck. So let's, well, at the moment anyway. So let's just get into first creature that just happens to be on my stack here and it is, oops, going too fast. It's Eternal Witness for 1 and 2 green. You get a 2-1 human Shimon. When Eternal Witness enters the battlefield, you may return target card from your graveyard to your battlefield. Um, I don't think Eternal Witness really needs any introduction. Uh, all the utility you can get out of this as far as you can get back any card out of your graveyard. Any card and put it in your hand. Um, the um, possibilities of that are almost endless. Yeah, Eternal Witness. Most most of us know what Eternal Witness is all about. Um, and so the next one is, next creature on my pile here is Phyrexian and Jester. <coughs> For six and a blue, you get a three-three beast, but it has imprint. When it enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-token creature. Phyrexian and Jester gets plus X plus Y, where X is the exiled creature card's power and Y is its toughness. Um, granted, yes, you can make a big creature out of this depending on what you exile or whatnot, but it's mostly in there just so I can exile something. Um, because it's, it's not, it, it's imprinted, so it doesn't say that you're going to get it back. Even if you kill this creature, um, yeah, you're not going to get that exile card back. It's exiled. So, that's why that's in there. You'll notice that there are a lot of big creatures in this deck, but it's half green, so there's also a lot of ramp in this deck. But, well, excuse me, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, the next card that I have in here is... Verdant, Sun, Verdant Sun's Avatar. For 5 and 2 green, you get a 5-5 five five Dinosaur Avatar that says whenever it enters the battlefield, whenever it or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. Uh, life gain is a hit or miss in Commander, because if you get hit for 21 Commander damage, it doesn't matter if you have a 1,000 life, you're still going to lose. But I still like it, because it's not... It's not completely useless. Um, if, yeah, somebody's playing a deck where their commander isn't really meant to, you know, do commander damage. The rest of the deck works for it, so they're they're going for your 40 life. This will help with that. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I like it for that reason. And the next next creature that I have on my stat on my pile here is oops. Is Thunderfoot Balath uh, for four and two green? You get a five-five beast with trample that has Lieutenant. So as long as you control your commander, Thunderfoot Balath gets plus two plus two, and other creatures you control get plus two plus two, and have trample. Um, needless to say, that's a banging bonus for himself for itself. Can't say him or her. You know, you never know. Um, and 
yeah, bonus for my commander, because I am trying to kill you with commander damage with this deck. But actually, I'm just trying to kill you. Obviously, any deck is meant to defeat your opponent, but this deck isn't really based around any kind of spell slinging or any kind of funny tactics. It's meant to get big creatures out there just so I can mess you up and beat the hell out of you. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. It is what it is. And the next one I have on here is Krufix, God of Horizons. Um, for three and Simic, you get a four, seven legendary enchantment creature, God. It is indestructible, but it has. As long as your devotion to green and blue is less than seven, Krufix isn't a creature. For anybody who doesn't know what devotion is, it counts the mana symbols in the permanent you control. Um, but it also says you have no maximum hand size, which goes great with my commander because you're constantly drawing a ton of cards. Uh, it also says if un if unused mana would be empty from your mana pool, that mana becomes colorless and you just get to hold on to that colorless mana until you see fit to use it. So yeah, that's, that's nasty in its own right, so I can hold that colorless just in you know to cast bigger creatures later on and not to mention if you can get the if you can get the devotion on this which i usually do it's still a four seven creature that's indestructible so great blocker yeah yeah there you go um let's see uh this is east i have kodama of east tree um for four and two green, you get a six six legendary creature spirit. It has reach, but the main ability um, is whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, if it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana cost from your hand onto the battlefield. Um, and it says when it enters, so it doesn't matter how it enters, as long as it enters. It can enter from the graveyard, it can enter from your hand, um, we can enter from the command zone if this is on the board. Um, and you get to put something from your hand that costs less than it onto the battlefield. Period. And um, it has partner, but that's irrelevant in this deck. Um, so yeah, get a big creature with good utility, in my personal opinion. Um, next I have uh, Grazing Gladeheart. Uh, for two and a green, get a two-two antelope that has a landfall uh, trigger. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may gain two life. Um, again, life gain, depending on the commander you're playing against, uh, life gain can mean something, life gain can not. And you never know what you're going to play against, so why not have a backup plan to the backup plan? And I'm going to end up having a lot of land to enter the battlefield in this game, so that's a lot of life to be gained. This deck is Avenger of Zendikar. A lot of people know what this is. For 5 and 2 green, you get a 5 5 elemental. When Avenger enters the battlefield, you create a 0 1 green plant creature token for each land you control. So, unless you're using mana rocks and you're just using straight mana, you're going to get minimum 7 of those tokens out on the board. It has a landfall trigger. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each plant creature you control. Um, so yeah, you get a bunch of tokens, and you can pump them up uh, pretty good for go-wide strategies, and yeah, just start running over stuff. Um, let's see, what's next? I have Rampaging Ballas. Ballas. Uh, you get a, for four and two green, you get a six, six beast with trample. Uh, that has uh, landfall. Whenever a land, in whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may create a four-four green beast creature token. Yet another card that's good for, you know, go wide strategies. Um, and like I said, once you'll see, once I get to the instants and sorceries in this deck, um, I'm gonna have a lot of lands entering the battlefield at almost all the time. So, yeah, that is what that does creates a bunch of 4-4 four, four beast and it's a 6-6 six, six trample so that's nothing to uh that's nothing to uh, sneeze at either uh let's see the next creature 
image that I have on my stack here is Lotus Cobra. For a one and a green, you get a two one snake. Has a land fall trigger whenever a land enters the battlefield of your control. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. And at times, depending on you know what's going on, I can have two, three, sometimes even four lands entering the battlefield at the same time. Like I said, you guys will see those cards when we get to them. And for all those lands that enter, I get free mana out of it. And then I can tap those lands for mana and add on top of that mana. So, yeah, just another good way to get my big, big creatures out. Um, oh, and also remember that I just, I, I don't really go out of my way for a lot of these decks. So a lot of them are just made from cards that I already owned. I put, just put a deck together because I thought it was fun. And, um, yeah, just pretty much go from there, just with what I got. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I adjust it as it as I see fit. And the next creature I have is Palaka Worm. For four and three green, you get a seven, seven worm with trample. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you gain seven life. When it dies, you draw a card. So it has an ETB, has a dies trigger, and it's a seven, seven with trample. So, yeah, I like it. Um... Next one I have here is Acidic Slime for 3 and 2 green. You get a 2-2 two, two ooze. It has Death Touch. <clears throat> Whenever it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. Uh, the only thing you'd have to watch out for is if you're the only person with artifacts or enchantments. Because you have to target something. But, so if you're the only person with an artifact or enchantment, you can destroy somebody's land. A lot of decks have some pesky annoying non-basic lands like Rogue's Passage, makes your creatures unblockable and stuff like that, you can get that stuff out of the way. Um, that way they can't utilize that anymore. Or, say if they're, if they beat some, if someone's a mana screwed, depending on the type of player you are, say if somebody's running a Demir deck and they have one blue mana and three black mana, when this enters the battlefield, I'm destroying that blue mana. Sorry, shit happens. But, okay, the next one on my stack here is Archetype of Imagination um, for 4 and 2 blue you get a 3 2 human enchantment creature human wizard so that says creatures you control have flying creatures your opponents control lose flying can't have or gain flying so once I get a bunch of big creatures on the board if I can get this on the board it gives them all evasion uh, obviously makes them way harder to block unless you have creatures with flying or reach. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, an honorable mention that I will give real quick is a card that I want in this deck, but I unfortunately don't own at the moment. Is excuse me, our type of endurance for six and oops, excuse me for six and two green. You get a six five enchantment creature four. That says creatures you control have hexproof. Creatures your opponents control lose hexproof and can't have or gain hexproof. I want this for this deck, but at the moment I don't have it. So if I come across it one day, whether I go out and buy it or if I trade cards with uh, you know somebody and I get this, it's going in this deck. Uh, let's see the next. Um, next one I have here is. Garuk's Pack Leader for four and two, blah, four and a green. You get a four four beast that says whenever another creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. There are a lot of creatures in this deck with uh, power three or greater, so I'm getting getting the utility off of this. Um, not to mention the fact that its ability is self-explanatory. Um, let's see what's this. Uh, Next one I have is uh, Brynlin the Moon Kraken for six and two blue. You get a six eight legendary creature Kraken. Whenever Brynlin the Moon Kraken enters the battlefield, or whenever you cast a spell with converted mana cost six or greater, which is going to happen a lot, you may return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Has partner, but that's irrelevant. Um, yeah, comes in. Bounces something that annoys me, and every time I cast something, it bounces. Cast something that costs six or greater, it bounces something that annoys me. So, yeah, you have that there. Our, oops. 
Alright, and the next creature that I have on my stack here is... Is uh, Kamal, Heart of Grossa. For 6 and 2 green, you get a 5 5 legendary creature, Human Druid. It says at the beginning of combat on your turn, creatures you control get plus 3 plus 3 and gain trample, so it has an overrun ability on, on the creature. So, yeah, that's nice. Uh, and you can pay 1 and a green until, until end of turn. Target land you control becomes a 1 1 elemental creature with. With vigilance, indestructible, and haste is still a land. Um, I can honestly say I've rarely ever used this ability. I have used it a couple times. As partner, that part doesn't matter. It's mostly in here for that overrun effect. Um, but if I have the mana to spend on that, and I know I can take somebody out, then why not? You know. And let's see the next one on this. Is actually a card that just came out not so long. And that is Defiler of Vigor for 3 and 2 green. You get a 6-6 six, six Phyrexian Worm, has Trample. As an additional cost to cast a green permanent spell, you may pay 2 life. The, uh, those spells cost a green less to cast if you pay life this way. This effect reduces only the amount of green mana you pay, which you can only do it once. You, you can't, I looked up the ruling on this, you, you're only taking away one green pip. Which, don't get me wrong, can help sometimes. Um, but anyway, uh, whenever you cast a green permanent spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Um, so, yeah, the crazy thing is it's already a 6-6 six, six with trample for 5. So, that's already, you know, pretty good stats in its own right. But the fact that you can save a, save a mana and pay 2 life to cast some of your green spells, why not, you know? Uh, let's see. Merkfiend Liege um, for two and three Simic Hybrids, which means you can pay green or blue for any of those pips. You get a 4 4 Whore, and it says that other green creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Other blue creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Untap all green and or blue creatures you control, control during each player's untap step. It's kind of a not really a pseudo vigilance, but happen them. Let me think, yeah, they can be on defense on everybody's turn. So, and they get stronger. And, yeah, that makes my commander a 7-7 seven, seven in its own right. So, yeah, let's go. And let's see, the next one I have here is um, uh, Spore Mound. Um, for 3 and 2 green, you get 3-3 three, three Fungus. Has a landfall trigger when a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1 1 green sapling creature token. Just like I said, I'm going to play, play multiple lands all the time, and so I'm going to be getting all kinds of creatures, creature tokens for that, whether it be these, the 4 4 beast, you know, everything that comes with landfall triggers. So, yeah, booyah. Um, and let's see, the next one I have here is also a card that just came out that I like and have utilized already a couple times. Um, oh, where did my spelling wrong? Oh, I had an eye in there, I don't know why. Um, booyah. Uh, Elvish, Hy Elvish Hydromancer. For a two and a green, you get a three, two elf wizard that has a kicker cost of three and a blue. And it says whenever uh, the Hydromancer enters the battlefield if it was kicked, uh, which will end up costing seven men, but that's not an issue in this deck. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. Um, there are a bunch of big creatures in this deck, so not only am I able to copy a, some form of a big creature that I already have, say if it has an ETB, that means enter the battlefield um, ability, I'm going to get a token of that creature, so whatever that ETB is, I get to do it again. And it's in there just to serve that purpose, do something, knock something out of the way, whatever the case may be, get another big ass creature out. Um, yeah, I like it. And the next one I have is Maloku the Clouded Mirror for four and a blue. 
you get a 2-4 legendary creature, Moonfolk Wizard, and that's flying. Um, it has ability, you can pay 1, returning land you control to its owner's hand. You get to create a 1-1 one, one Blue Illusion creature token with flying. And what makes this so awesome with the commander that I have is that I can pay 1. Not to mention, you can pay 1 and return the land that you tapped to your hand. It doesn't say that you have to return an untapped land or anything like that, so you can pay 1, return a land to your hand, you get the token get the uh, blue blue illusion you can and then play your land for turn you can pay one again return it to your hand get another token with my commander on the board you can play a second land for turn um so yeah i get great utility out of this card needless to say a bunch of these tokens um if i need a quick blocker or something like that as soon as you say you're going into combat i'll pay this one return the land in my hand and get a blue blue illusion um yeah so, yeah, there you go. Uh, let's see, the next one is uh, Malimo Moro Sorcerer for 4 and 3 green. You get a Star Star Legendary Creature Elemental. Has Trample. Um, its power and toughness is equal to the number of lands you control. Um, yeah, this, thing's, this thing gets huge. That's what she said. Um, because, yeah, there's going to be a gang of lands on the board, so, or on my side of the board. I can't speak for you. I don't know what kind of deck you're running. So, yeah, that, that there is going to be huge. And the fact that it has Trample just makes it even better for me. Um, the next one I have, the next creature I have is Yavi Maya Elder for 1 and 2 green. You get a 2, 1 human druid that says, uh, whenever the Elder dies, you may search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal them, put them in your hand, and shuffle. You can also pay two and sacrifice the elder to draw a card. So, yeah, you can, for lack of a better term, you can basically make it commit suicide so that you can go get those two lands, or you can just use it as a blocker. Or, fuck it, just keep attacking with it and somebody get, until somebody gets sick of you attacking with it, which they will eventually, even though even though it's only a two. They know what you're trying to do, but you can still only take so many twos. So they will eventually block it. And um, if I haven't played any lands this turn, with my commander on the board, I can play both of those lands and draw cards from them. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and actually, there are only... Well, I can't say there are only three creatures. There are only three colored creatures left. So, um, I'm black. I'm allowed to say the word colored. Um... I'm just kidding you guys, I don't care about stuff like that. Um, the next one is Terrestidon. I'm sure a lot of people know this one. For 6 and 2 green, you get a 9-9 elephant that says whenever Terrestidon enters the battlefield, you may destroy up to 3 target non-creature permanents. For each permanent put into a graveyard this way, its, contro <coughs> it's, contro it's controller creates a 3-3 green elephant creature. Um, um, I'd say 80% of the time when I cast this spell, I'm blowing up somebody's lands. Um, like I said earlier, say if somebody's getting a little mana screwed, or they only have so many of a certain color or whatever, I'm going to blow those colors up. So, now you're, now you're even more screwed. Granted, I know I'm giving you 3-3, three, three, um, you know, creatures from it, but I really don't care. Uh, your 3-3 three, three creatures are really not going to be a threat to my creatures who are much stronger than that um and i can almost guarantee you, if even if i gave even if i did all that to one opponent and they got all three tokens i have more tokens on the board than they do most of the time let me let me let me not sound cocky and uh the second to last creature i have is a tommy celebrant of bounty cost three and simic for a 3-1 legendary creature naga druid has cascade which means um you cast this spell, um, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less, and then you may, you know, cast it without paying its mana cost. Put the exile cards on the bottom of your library in a random order, and it says spells you cast with converted mana cost six or greater also have cascade. So I'm getting a ton of utility out of this card. In a sense, if I didn't like the commander that's in this deck, so that I could constantly play two lands every turn and draw cards off of those. This would probably be the commander for the deck, but since it's not, I, it has a nice place in the 99. And the last uh, colored creature that I have 
is um, is Magus of the Order <coughs> for three and two green. You get a three three human wizard that has pay a green and sack the Magus and another green creature, which I have plenty of, them, even if it's one of those little one one sapling tokens. And you get to search your library for a green creature card, put on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Um, you guys have seen the creatures in this deck, so there are quite a few blue or green creatures that I can go get with this. I can even go get Krufix with this because it's green and blue if I chose to. Um, I'd say most of the time, if it's not already in my hand or if it's on the board, I, I use this deck to go get Terracinum. Um, um, yeah, and alright. Now we're going to move on into the enchantments of this deck. Alright, now the first enchantment that's on my stack here is oh booyah right there unnatural growth for one and four green i know that sounds intimidating but in this deck that is not an issue um you, it, uh, you get an enchantment that says at the beginning of each combat each combat that's on everybody's turn uh double the power and toughness of each creature you control until end of turn that is insane with some of these creatures, especially say the Mal the Malimo, who who knows how big that thing is going to be, and it has trample. If I was to ever run a, a mono green deck with that as the commander, you better believe that this card's coming. Um, so yeah, it makes all those creatures that I have that are already big as hell even bigger. Um, and let's see. There actually aren't a lot of enchantments in this deck. I guess there's yeah, five total, and that was one of them, and this is another one, Garouk's Uprising for two and a green. You get an enchantment that says whenever it enters the battlefield, if you control a creature with power four or greater, draw a card. That's definitely happening. Uh, creatures you control have trample. Nice. And it says whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card all this is going to be happening um yeah you will definitely get the all the worth of this card all 2.99 of it uh out of this card um and yeah i like it i like it a lot and let's see the next one is uh dormant grove and it's a flip card. Uh, it says, um, well, for three and a green, you get this enchantment. It says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature control. Then if you control a creature with toughness six or greater, transform it. And it transformed in, I call this Gnarled Sparkly, but it's called Gnarled Grove Strider. It becomes a three, six tree folk that has vigilance and it gives other creatures you control vigilance. Um, it's already big as hell. So if yeah, if I can get this out and get it flipped, which a lot of times it flips almost the exact same turn that it comes in, all those big creatures that are possibly flying, possibly have trample, they're all possibly gonna have vigilance, or they're all gonna have vigilance with this on the board. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, so yeah, I like that card for that reason. Um, let's see. Second to last, I should say, is um, Hadana's Climb for one in Simic. You get a legendary enchantment that says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Then, if that creature has three or more plus one, plus one counters on it, transform Hadana, and it transforms into Wing Template of Araska. Um, it turns into a legendary land that has, um, you can tap it for any color in your. You can tap it for any color, or you can pay one in seven, tap it, tap it. Darker creature you control gains flying and gets plus one, plus X, plus X, until end of turn where X is power. Basically, you're giving it flying and you're doubling its power. And yeah, these creatures are big enough. So yeah, then they'll be flying, they'll have evasion, and they'll be huge. Giggity. And the last, um, enchantment I have in this deck is one that my best friend hates a lot um, and I don't blame him but it's omniscience um, omniscience I'm just kidding calm down everybody 
for four and three blue. You get an enchantment that says you may cast spells from your hand without paying the mana cost. Um, I've gotten this on the board as as early as maybe like turn five in this deck. And like I said, once you see the search season in instance, you'll see why, because I'll be ramping like crazy. Yeah, I've gotten this out super early. Obviously, I can cast all the things from my hand for free. And then as I play more lands, especially if my commander's on the board, I'm playing additional lands, I get to keep drawing cards, and I just get to keep playing them. And if I end up having a ramp spell on my hand, I'm going to ramp, and I'm going to go get those lands. I'm going to draw more cards. I'm going to play more spells. It just goes on and on and on and on, and yeah, love it. Um, all right, now the sorceries that are in this deck, again, in no particular order. They're just stacked in there respective categories and this is Dryad's Revival <clears throat> for two and a green cast this sorcery and you get to return target card from your graveyard to your hand same as Eternal Witness so they're easily there and it also has a flashback of four and a green you get to do it again um yeah that card pretty much speaks for itself I can, you can get rid of my stuff for say if it's um Say if it's an instant sorcery that I want back out of my graveyard, I can go get it with this, and I have used it for that before. So, booyah. Uh, let's see, next I have, well, this, I have more cards in this deck that do this than I thought, but hey, whatever. Uh, revive, for one and a green, you get a source that says return to a green card from your graveyard to your hand, which is completely fine. I know some of the stuff's blue, but that's irrelevant. Um, I've used this card to go and pack in my graveyard and get ramp spells back so I can cast them again so I can draw more cards. Um, yeah, especially with omniscience on the board, just go back and get something that you can cast for free. Um, and um, yeah, I like I like it for that reason. Um, next I have uh, a cartographer survey. Uh, for three in the green, you can cast this sorcery. You can look at the top seven cards of your library, put up to two lands. It doesn't say basic lands, you can put any lands. Put up to two lands, land cards from among them onto the battlefield tapped. Put the rest on the bottom in a random order. Um, and truth, truth be told, there are only three non basic lands in this whole deck. Um, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to cover them at the end. I, I, I know that... Oh, well, I guess I lied because I'm looking through them right now. And there are four. There are five. <laughs> but they all they all serve a purpose. Yeah, there are five non-basic lands in this deck. I'll be sure to cover these at the end. I know I said I was going to start making videos just leaving the lands out because that just takes up more time. But uh, these ones actually mean something for this deck. So... If I end up making a video with non-basic lands that have the utility for the deck and is not just mana fixing, then I'll mention them. Uh, but, um, yeah, yeah, I like this card, I like this card. And this is a land-heavy deck, so you're going to get two lands pretty much every single time that you do this. Um, and the next one I have is Migration Path. For three and a green, you can search your library for up to two basic land cards and put them on the battlefield tapped. It also has cycling for two, so if you end up already having a gang of lands on the board and say you get this late game, or you know, whatever the case may be, you can just pay two and cycle it. Draw a card. So, yeah, you can work out either way. Early game ramp, late game cycle. Um, next one I have here is unexpected results for two and Simic. You can get two shelf for your library. Then reveal the top card. If it's a non-land card, you can cast it without paying its mana cost. And I have gotten omniscience with this before, believe it or not, and it's amazing when that happens. Because the next thing you see is about two to three salty faces when this happens. Um, but if it's a land card, uh, you may put it. Uh, you may put it on the battlefield, and you return unexpected results to your hand. So you just if, if you're flipping over lands. You just get to keep using this over and over and over again so it works out in that aspect that I get more lands out of it or I get to cast something without paying this mana cost and hopefully it's something big that's what she said 
Um, the next sorcery I have in here is Cultivate. I'm sure this needs no introduction. And matter of fact, while I'm covering Cultivate, I will also cover... Could they do the same thing? I will also cover Kadama's Reach. Um, the only difference is this is an arcane spell, but that's an old ability that pretty much doesn't mean anything anymore. I'm sure it means something to somebody, but it doesn't mean shit to me. Um, but both of those cards let you search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal those cards, put one on the battlefield tapped, and you get to put the other in your hand. Um, so, yeah, with your command on the board, you can draw a card from that tap land, and you can also play that other land if you haven't already played two lands that turn. So, yeah, you're definitely getting uh, what's worth out of those cards. Um, let's see. Uh, the next is an oldie but goodie that I feel like needs no real introduction, but it's rampant growth. For one of the green, you get to search a library for a basic land card, put on the battlefield tab, then shuffle. Pretty simple. Pretty cut and dry. No further explanation either there. Um, and the next one I have is... Harvest for four and a green. You get to gain one life for each land you control, which is gonna be a lot. Um, again, like I keep saying, life gain is hit or miss in a commander deck. I guess it just depends on the commander that you're playing against and what strategies they're using against you. Um, yeah, so yeah, there are three, no, 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 there are four sorceries left. And the next one is. Uh, fungal sprouting for three and a green. You get to put X one one green sapling creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is the greatest power amongst creatures you control. And again, as you guys have seen, I have some pretty big creatures in this deck, and I also have ways to make them bigger. So, yeah, I'm gonna get a ton of tokens out of this. A ton of ch ton of chump blockers or overrunners if Kamal's on the board. You know, we'll see what happens. And let's see, the third to last is uh, Ranger's Path um, for three and a green. Search your library for up to two forest cards. Put them on the battlefield tabs and shuffle your library. I know this is specifically forest, but the majority of this, it, the majority of cards in this deck are green anyway. So that's not really gonna hurt me any. And say if I had a deck, this isn't one of them, but I do have another deck that has green, um, that has green in it, that has this card. And it doesn't say you have to search for two basic forests. You can search for two cards that have the forest land type, and you can put them on the battlefield, just flat out. Um, and another deck that I may do one day has um, non-basic lands that have the forest land types, and, um, so this works for that. Let's see, second to last is Explore. Um, one in a green, you get to play an additional land this turn and draw a card. Pretty cool with me. Um, I've even used this, not even having a land, just to pay two and draw a card. Because you might draw a land, and if you do, you can play it. If you don't, you get to, you've got to draw a land for two mana. That's not horrible. So, yeah. And the last uh, sorcery that I have in this deck at the moment is Sakashima's Will. For three and a blue, you get to choose one. If you control a commander as you cast this spell, you may choose both. Target opponent chooses a creature they control, you gain control of it. That's pretty slick, especially if somebody's, you know, running uh, that type of Voltron deck like not necessarily Voltron, but decks that can hold their own by themselves. Like Child of Alara can hold a deck by itself. Um, Narset can hold a deck by itself. I know this because I own a Child of Alara deck, and I used to own a Narset deck. And they do just fine. But in any event, um, yeah, if they're doing that kind of deck, because you're targeting the opponent, not the creature. So you get to take that creature. They're going to, well, you, the opponent's going to have to give it to you. But then, you get to choose a creature you control, 
each other creature you control becomes a copy of that creature. And let me tell you, one of the things I did with this once, once I had, when I had a bunch of creatures on the board, a bunch of tokens, I played this card and I chose for all of my creatures to become a copy of the Merc, the Merc Fiend Liege. So they all gave each other plus what the fuck, plus what the fuck, and they were all huge. Giggity. And um, I want to say the person I did that against uh, scooped almost immediately, which I honestly didn't blame them. Because I say even if you only had five blockers, um, I had maybe 15 tokens on the board. Now they're all ridiculously strong. Um, you were gonna die anyway. Um, so yeah, there's that. And let's just go into the instants that are in this deck. Again, I know this deck isn't, you know, 100% polished or anything like that. I just made it out of stuff that I already owned. Um, just to, you know, have some fun. Because I don't play in tournaments or anything like that anymore. So, um, I just like to play for fun. It's really not that serious to me, it's just a game, um, but you have a return to nature, it costs one and a green, and you get to choose one, love cards with utility, uh, you can destroy a target artifact, you can destroy target enchantment, or you can exile target card from a graveyard, and I feel like this, there's always those cards that they, some, they do something similar, um, but then one card does like one other thing better than the other, and... Um, the one that comes to mind for me is, and I think I'm, is Naturalized. Because this costs one and a green, and you can destroy a target artifact or enchantment. This costs one and a green, but you can also exile a card from a graveyard. Just that one little thing makes it so much better. Because say if somebody's trying to use an animate dead, or use a rise from the grave to bring back something ridiculous from their graveyard. Or if somebody's trying to pay a flashback or something like that. Booyah. In response to that, I'm going to exile that card from your graveyard and you can stop talking to me. Um, yeah. So just on that one notion, I feel like this shit's unnaturalized. Um, but there are a lot of cards like that. You guys know. Um, and let's see. The next card that is in my stack of instants is... Haro. Um, that was slightly racist. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Um, should I bow or something? Anyway, for two and a green, um, you get to cast this instant, but as an additional cost to cast this spell, you have to sacrifice a land. Big whoop to do. I'll have plenty of them. Uh, you get to search your library for up to two, ba two basic lands cards and put them on the battlefield. Not tapped. Just put them on the battlefield. So as soon as they hit, you can immediately use... Because I know a lot of people have done this. I'm just thinking of one example. That somebody will play Haro, sacrifice a land, go get two land, and they'll use those two lands to play Rampant Growth. So you get three lands in the three lands in a turn. So you so basically you want up two lands from the one land that you sacrificed. Nobody's really gonna argue with that. Is and uh, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or plants or that you don't control. And needless to say, I have a lot of big creatures in this deck, so for two mana, I'm blowing up. I'm blowing up something. You know, not blowing something, blowing up something. Get your mind out of the gutter. Giggity. Um, let's see. And the next card I have, which I do believe, let me see. Is bite down for one and a green. Again, target creature you control does damage equal to its power to target target creature or planeswalker you don't control. They do the exact same thing. Why am I just not realizing that? Like I said, I was just grabbing cards that out of my piles that looked interesting that I feel would make a good fit in this deck. And yeah, these are. It's not like green and blue are known for just flat out saying, "Hey, destroy a creature." So this is the closest thing I have to something like that is making my creatures do damage equal to their power to fuck something up. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. The next one I have here is uh, Tail Swipe. 
uh, for one green, you get to cast this instant, and you get to choose target creature you control and target creature you don't control. If you cast this spell during your main phase, uh, that creature gets plus one plus the uh, the creature you control gets plus one plus one, and then those creatures fight each other. Um, I have a lot of big creatures in this deck again, so this again to me is another form of removal to get something out of, way, out of my way because I know I'm going to try to attack you. Um, so yeah, there's that, and then the next one I have is uh, Price Fight. Uh, for one in the green, target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have explained this on the last one. For anybody who doesn't know what fight does, uh, it means each, each creature deals damage equal to the power, to their powers to each other. You know? So, it's, it, it basically be like s some, some little person that weighs like 100 pounds going up against some big bodybuilder, some big Dwayne Johnson looking motherfucker two something 300 pounds of pure muscle and they go punch each other at the same time in the face one is clearly going to uh, out punch the other um, and with this I also get to create a treasure token uh, the, creature to the treasure token is eh whatever the fact that my big creature gets to fight your smaller creature that's what this is here for for cheap my dad um, uh, next card I have is Plummet, um, because I don't naturally have a lot of creatures in this deck that have flying, I have one that makes my creatures fly, I have one that create flyers, that is a flyer, but there's not really a lot, so, I, like I said, this deck, you know, it was just made on some humbug shit, I haven't gone out of my way for it. So I just added in cards that I thought would help at the time. Over time, you know how decks are, the deck will change. And I might find something that's better than this, which I'm sure I will. But for one in the green, you get to destroy target creature with flying. Uh, pretty cut and dry. And needless to say, there are a lot of commanders out there that fly. So for one in the green, if I can get rid of one of them, I'm going to. Um, and not to mention, that gets past the fighting thing. Say if your flying commander is bigger than my creature that I'm trying to fight you with, I can just pay one in the green and get rid of the damn thing. And then, um, yeah, not an issue anymore, is it? Um, and the next is I have I five left is Ancient Anubis. For one in the green, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. If it's legendary, um, my commander's legendary, and there are a couple other legendary in here, but anyway, then it fights target creature and opponent controls, so another fight mechanic, and you get to make the creature one point bigger if need be, um, so yeah, one in a green, fight something, um, let's see, uh, these broken wings, okay, we won't do that again, for two in a green, you get an instant that says, Destroy target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. You gotta love cards with utility. Whichever one's the biggest threat to you at the time, this is what that's gonna. This is what. This is a card that can get rid of one of those threats. So, yeah, pretty cut and dry there. Uh, let's see. Uh, next, I have. Uh, Crushing Vine for two and a green. You get to choose one. Destroy target creature with flying or destroy target artifact. And if it's an artifact creature, it's definitely going to get fucked up. But, um, yeah, like I said, like cards with utility, this can just flat out get rid of those pesky flyers or those pesky artifacts. So, um, and let's see. The next one pretty much does the same thing. Uh, <laughs> It is what it is. Um, aerial pre predation uh, for tuna green to start target creatures with flying and you gain two life. Um, yeah, I've already explained why I have these in there. And the last one I have is last instant, I should say, is beast within for two and a green. You get to destroy a target permanent that's anything on the battlefield. It's controller does get a 3 3 green. 
beast, but depending on what you destroy, who gives a shit about that? Um, again, this is another card. Yeah, I will use to mess you up. I will destroy your soul ring. I will destroy your mana vaults. And, you know, stuff like that. I will just, if your, your mana screwed and you say you only have one, as soon as you play that, that next color that you need, I'm going to destroy it. You'll get one use out of it. In response, you can't tap it for mana until the next phase, but I'm going to destroy it. Just know that that's going to happen. Um, and, yeah, that covers those. Now, let's go into the artifacts. Um, I have three artifact creatures in this deck. Uh, let's see. And the first one is Meteor Golem. Um, for seven mana, you get a 3-3 three, three go Golem. Golem. I said Gollum the first time, did Whatever. Um, whenever it enters the battlefield, destroy target non-land permanent un opponent controls. That's what it's in here for. Get in, destroy something. I don't care what I don't care what happens after that, just destroy something. But not to mention, I do have cards in this deck that let me get any card out of my graveyard. So if this is my graveyard, I get it back, cast it again, destroy something. crazy thing is there are only two cards that start with the word Platinum, and they are both in this deck, and the first one is Platinum Angel. Uh, for seven, you get a 4-4 Artifact Creature Angel, has flying, that says you can't lose the game, and your opponents can't win. Platinum Angel, I feel like, needs no introduction. Uh, I know there are a lot of people out there that says this, this is unplayable, but not everybody plays the same way that you do. Not everybody plays the same way that I do. Everybody plays different. That's what makes this game fun to me. Notice that I said the keyword game. This is just a game. Some people take this shit way too seriously. And, um, and like I said, yep, the other one is Platinum Imperion, which I have in this deck. For eight mana, you get an eight, eight golem, golem, whatever. I think it's huge. That's what she said. Um, that says your life total can't change. Um, which means this on the board, unless it's commander damage, um, yeah, because I'm pretty sure you can still get it with commander damage, I'm going to look into that, but in any event, your natural life total can't change, which granted means the life gain cards I have in here wouldn't be of much use with this, but they are of use if I don't have this on the board, um, so in essence, if somebody's trying to kill you with straight damage or whatever, with this on the board, that's not a possibility. Um, so, yeah. Alright, and now let us get into the artifacts that I have in this deck. Um, the first one I see here is our Millery Sphere. Uh, for two, you get this artifact, and it says you can pay two, tap, sack it. And you get to search the library for up to two basic land cards, reveal them, put them in your hand, then shuffle your library. Lands. Lands, lands, and more lands so I can draw, draw, and draw more cards, which means I can play bigger creatures. Let's go. And uh, let's see, the next one is... Library of Lane. Uh, for one mana, you have no maximum hand size. And... Um, if an effect would uh, cause you to dis effect or ability, ability is pretty much what they're looking for. Uh, causes you to discard, um, cause you to discard a card, discard it, you may put it on top of your library instead of putting it in your graveyard. Now I'm have to. Maybe I've been reading this card for the wrong way, or maybe it's what the way it's worded on the old cards. And because I thought it was if. If a spell or ability your opponent controls caused you to discard a card, you may put it, but I guess it's if you discard one period, which don't get me wrong, I'm probably not discarding any cards in this deck, but if somebody was playing something that made me discard a card, uh, you know, whatever, I may let it go to my graveyard, or I can put it on top of my library if I want to. So, yeah. Like I said, the, the reason I put all these kind of cards in here is because I'm going to be drawing a lot of cards. And so this deck had to come with a Thought Vessel. 
uh, uh, two men um, in a rock. Um, the, um, you have no maximum hand size, and it taps for colorless. So, you still, yeah, you still get to use it. It's not just sitting there. Unlike the next card that I have, which does just sit there, but it sits there. It sits there with a purpose, and it's spell book. Zero drop artifact. Period. You have no maximum hand size. Yeah, pretty cut and dry. I feel like this is another card that really doesn't need an introduction. And uh, let's see. Now I have three artifact equipments in this deck, and um, they all pretty much serve the same purpose. Um, in a sense, in a sense, because the first one I see here is a Whisper Silk Cloak for three mana. You get this artifact equipment. A equipped creature is unblockable. Creature has Shroud, which means it can't be the target of spells or abilities from anybody. That includes myself. Um, has an equip cost too. So yeah, give your creature Shroud and make it unblockable. More than likely, this would end up on, on my commander. So I can just swing, keep swinging out on you and eventually kill you. Um, the next one I have on here. Uh, Lightning Greaves, uh, two, cost two, get this artifact equipment, Equ equip creature has haste, um, for anybody who doesn't know, haste means if it has, say, an activated ability that you have to tap it, or if it's a creature, because creatures can't attack as soon as they hit the battlefield, is if they have haste, they can do whatever the hell they want, they can attack, um, as soon as they hit the battlefield, and any creatures you have that have an active ability that you have to tap it or anything, you can put lightning grooves on it, and you can use that ability. Um, so, yeah. Haste and Shroud. And the last one, given the theme of the first two equipments, I'm sure you guys may know what this last one is. Um, if I spell it right. And it is Swiftfoot Boots. Love this one. Uh, for two men, you get this artifact equipment. Equipped creature has hexproof and haste. I already explained what haste is, but hexproof, for those who don't know, means it can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. So you can still boost it. You can still do whatever the hell you want to it. And there's nothing anybody can say about it because they can't do anything. Um, and it has an equip cost one. Um, so, yeah. That's nice there. That is all the creatures, enchantments, sorceries, instants, and artifacts. Now, I will talk about the five, and there are only five non-basic lands in this deck, um, and I will talk about them right now. Uh, one needs no introduction, and that is Command Tower. Um, I feel like any deck that has two or more colors should have a Command Tower in it. Uh, it's a land that taps for any color in your commander's color identity. It's a command tower. I'm not going to explain any further. Um, the uh, next one is uh, Reliquary Tower. It's a land, taps for colors, but it also gives you no maximum hand size. Like I said, I, I draw a lot of cards with this deck, so I need as many cheap, fast ways to get no maximum hand size as I possibly can, or I end up discarding a ton of cards. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the next one, which I will cover these both at the same time, one is Evolving Wilds. Um, I'm sure a lot of people know what that does, and if you know what that does, you know the next card I'm about to say, which is Terramorphic Expanse, because they both literally do the exact same thing. They're a land, they don't tap for mana, but you can sack them. Tap and sack them, and search your library for a basic land card put on the battlefield tabs and shelf your library. The thing I like about these is even if you get them late game, they're still useful. Because if your commander's on the board, you can play one of these, get the card draw, or any of the landfall triggers that you have on the board. You can tap it, you can sack it, go in your library and get a basic land put on the battlefield, and any of those landfall triggers get to happen again. So, yeah. That's why those are in the deck. And the last, um, the last, 
non-basic land in here, which I found out, I want to say it was last week, depending on when you're watching this video. Today for me is January 31st. Um, is Simic Growth Chamber, and I realized something last week that this card uh, causes an infinite combo. Um, but I'll get into that in a second. Uh, but it's Simic Growth Chamber. It enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, uh, return a land you control to its owner's hand, and it taps for Simic. It taps for green and blue. Now you can choose to return this back to your hand. Um, which with those landfall triggers does help a lot. And the way that this can go infinite is with my Kadama the Ace Tree. Um, and any, including my commander, any kind of landfall trigger, because you saw whenever another permanent and lands are permanents enters the battlefield in your control. If it wasn't put onto the battlefield with this ability, you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser VAP, equal or lesser convert to mana cost. Now, what happens here is you put the Simic Growth Chamber on the field. Whatever landfall triggers you have on the board happen. Then you return the Simic Growth Chamber to your hand. Now, this says you may put a permanent card with equal or lesser converted mana cost. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put the Simic Growth Chamber back on the board. And I'm going to get the landfall triggers again. I'm going to put the Simic Growth Chamber back in my hand. This says that I can keep doing that over and over and over and over again. So depending on what, what landfall triggers you have on the board, you can, draw, you can draw your entire library. You can gain infinite life. You can get infinite tokens. You can get infinite mana. Um, so yeah. Uh, a lot of yeah, a lot of ways that that a lot of ways that that will work. Um, but there it is. That is my AC Tyrant of Jaya Straight deck. I hope you guys liked it. If you guys have any ideas, because like I said, I just built this on some humbug stuff, just out of cards that I had. It's not even in a sleeve yet. I need to get some sleeves for it because I do like this deck and I'm gonna keep it. But I know it can use some improving, which is which is completely fine. So, any suggestions you guys may have, please leave in the comment section below. I'm open to all suggestions. That's fine, you know. This is how we learn. You know, nobody was born uh, knowing how to play this game. That's what I wish a lot of people would understand. Um, but a, a lot of them don't, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, any suggestions, please uh, leave it in the comment section below. Uh, go ahead and like the video, subscribe if you like the content. I greatly appreciate the few people that do watch my videos. This is for you guys. Um, and on to the next time when I have time. So until then, peace.